Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy. Welcome back for another crafty venture. And welcome to my 25th episode of Saturday Morning Makes for 2024. Hey guys, welcome to Saturday Morning Makes. Welcome in, welcome in. Thank you for joining me. I don't have a whole lot to share today, and as you can see, I have nothing down before you. <laughs> as always, I want to introduce Saturday Morning Makes to those of you who may be new. This is an open art collaborative that is hosted and was the brainchild of the sweet Jillian Norwood, and you can um, go to her channel. I will have her link downstairs. Um, go see what she's created and what she's created in the past. She opened this up to all creators of all sorts. It doesn't matter what your medium is. And she just invites everyone to play using the hashtag SatmornMakes. Share your projects with that hashtag and we'll go find you. And then if you want to see what we've done, you also search with that hashtag and you can go out and see what everyone else has done. So with that said, I just want to share a couple little cards. I actually posted a video of my coloring process, but it's very hard to capture these. So I want to share. They're just, they were little, um, they're ephemera. Let me see if I can show you. I've got stuff everywhere. If you guys could see just outside a camera shot. Ephemera, digital ephemera from the F-Pop Etsy shop, E-P-H-P-O-P. -P -P. It used to be ephemera, but now it's F pop. Anyway, lots of different ephemera, lots of different things. I've got some backgrounds. I've got some telegram cards. Absolutely adore this guy. But anyway, um, that's how these images were printed off. They were printed from that shop, printed as tags, and they were um, just printed on regular copier paper. But I mounted them to some recycled cardboard and I covered them with a gloss medium. Unfortunately, that gloss medium makes it so that they're very difficult to capture because of all the glare and all that. So I just wanted to take a minute and show them a little more slowly on screen. Now they, like I said, are covered with that gloss medium and then I colored over them with my Olos. And the vibrancy of those colors, just amazing. And I wish you could see the 3D effect that I talk about, but it's just not picked up on the camera. So those are the four that I've colored, but I just wanted to share that in case you watched the video and thought, Meh, okay. And you still might think, Meh, okay. <laughs> but I wanted to share those with you. And I have lots of other things from there. I have um, a garland coming up that I'll be sharing that I created using some of Tracy's images as well. But for today, back to today, I'm trying my hand at making some stuffed prim, I don't know, picks, I guess. I don't know what else to call them. So these are the two that I've made. This one is much more prim than this one. Um, I created the festooning myself as well. And um, I have them in this jar of corks, but I will pull them out and we'll talk about them a little more in depth. So a year or so ago, I took apart a quilt and the back side of that quilt was this faux Sherpa. So it's a queen size quilt. So I have that much of the faux Sherpa. So I decided that I was going to start using it. So I just freehanded both of these patterns, just a very prim. If you all are familiar with primitive art, um, just very prim shapes if you will. I pinned my two pieces of fabric back to back and then I drew on it what I wanted. I was not, oh, what do I want to say? I didn't realize how small they would be but I'm not mad about them. I think they're both great. So I, I just, I pinned it together, I drew it out, I stitched it together and then I cut it out and then I flipped it inside out. I stuffed it with batting and then I added all the features to the outside. So this festooning is just several layers of cray paper and I stitched it down the middle and you can see my sewing skills still leave much to be desired. I'm teaching myself everything as I go y'all. I'm teaching myself how to use a sewing machine, teaching myself how to make festooning, teaching myself how to do patterns and so like I don't I'm I'm winging all this, right? So I think they're fantastic and then I just had these little dowels in my stash just a regular old dowel. I have no idea the measurement, whatever size you think that might be. <laughs> and, and I 
had a hole where I had stuffed it in. I filled that hole with hot glue and I stuck the stick in there. And then I did the festooning and the ribbons. And I think he's fantastic. I absolutely love him. He will likely go down into um, a floral arrangement once I start decorating for, for fall and Halloween. But then this guy too. I love the little swoopy over top of the ghost. And I had to add the festooning and the ribbons on this one as well. Super, super cute. I just um, hand cut out the eyes and the nose. Or this is his mouth. This is his nose, obviously. But that's just black felt. And then for the eyes, it's just like some... Uh, what is it called? This. It was a Stamperia Contour White. And the festooning, like I said, it's just cray paper. And I layered it up. I've got black and white. I also have some orange and some green coming. And um, I'll make some more. I love the festooning. I feel like it adds so much to it. And especially if you're going to have them, you know, on a stick up inside an arrangement of some sort. Very cute. And with the festooning, once you sew it, then you just snip it up to the stitching but not through the stitching so you just do that all the way down you can make a full garland with this right it doesn't just have to be around um, your critters necks so you just snip like that and then you twist it just do a little bit of a twist and you go on down and you keep twisting and twisting and then you fluff it up and then you have that beautiful effect. And again, you can make full-on garlands with this. I love it. It's so much fun. And really, it's time-consuming, but it's easy. I have seen um, videos where people will layer them together and use glue and then put a piece of string down the middle versus stitching it together. For me, this was faster. I'm just plain. So those, those guys... And then I also did this candy corn. Now the candy corn isn't on a stick. It doesn't have a face. It's just, it's just what it is. <laughs> I do kind of like the way this bowed right here a little bit. I just threw this pattern and then I cut it and I, I dyed the fabric as well. I used acrylic paints. I soaked the, the fabric in acrylic, acrylic paint water, if that makes sense. And then I, I hung them out to dry and then I stitched... I stitched each piece together on both sides and then I stitched my sides together and then I stuffed it. But the way this bows right here a little bit kind of makes me think he could be a ghosty too because the way I have that bowed there just lend, lends itself to that as well. So, but definitely bigger than these, right? Quite, quite a bit bigger. I'm not sure if I'm going to put a face on this one. I may just leave it as it is, but I may also put it on a stick because that could be really cute too right with the festooning at the bottom and stuff. I think it's super cute. And over here, I also have some more fabric that I've dyed. Again, just with um, acrylic paints in water, just watered down. I, I soaked them in a bowl for about 12 hours. I went to work and came back and did some things and then I rinsed them out. But I also have um, an orange and I have a red. Also, I'm making this into something. <laughs> I don't know what. It was supposed to be round. Clearly that didn't work. Um, and I don't know if it was my hand drawing or, or the fact that I'm still learning to sew. I don't know. But I was thinking that maybe I could put, you know, try to get my corners a little bit better or whatever. I just think I need to mold it and play with it a little bit. But I either want to put a stem here at the top and then do like some um, string some twine and make the outline of the, the ridges of a pumpkin and make it into a pumpkin. Or I can do it like this, put a hole here and put my um, stem this way. I just want to get um, something from the yard that would actually look like a stick. But given that I live in an apartment building, there's not much of a yard per se. So... Anyway, not sure what I'm going to do with this, or I could continue to mold it and play with it and make it into a ghost as well. I'm not sure. Thoughts? Drop them downstairs. <laughs>
let me know what you think I should make it into because right now it's just it's just a blob but I don't hate it <laughs> is that crazy and you know you you put a face on anything and it, it can be cute right or it can be a little bit creepy too just depends on how you do that face I love that creepy face so that's all I have for y'all today let me know what you think um, yeah completely branching out in different things and I've been playing with my um, with my molds and stuff and trying to figure out if I like air dry um, clay so I have some air dry clay molds here and then I also have in um, what is this hot glue this is hot glue that's painted again hot glue and that's the um, dry paste or the air dry paste plus I also have some that I've done with um, toilet paper if you can believe it let me see if I have access to one real quick here's a skull this is toilet paper it's literally toilet paper pushed down into a mold and then I painted it is that crazy let me see here's here's a wing like a bat wing that's toilet paper as well that's toilet paper so obviously it's going to depend on what you're making to what um, medium you use to, to create your molds with. This is a frame that's um, done with hot glue. I tried that same frame with the air dry clay and it just broke to pieces. So I'm sure that's operator error. But I also have some wings that are in clay. Again, it broke, but it's still gorgeous, right? still can be used and here's another one that broke but yeah so I'm just playing with some new things at least new to me different having fun learning you know just trying my hand at different things yeah, here's one of the skulls that's in the clay that came out well so anyway I have been busy but not with paper crafts this week so thank you for allowing me to share what my hands been working at this week and I look forward to hearing your comments downstairs. Give me suggestions. I'm very, very open. So yeah, Nancy's been busy. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Drop me comments downstairs. You know I want to talk to you. Until next time, happy Saturday morning makes. And I'm out.